Welcome. I have an experiment that I have read about in some scholarly articles that I wanted to try myself and share with you the results. And basically what I'm trying to do here is instead of using ethanol for a flex fuel sensor, I plan to try using methanol in different blends from 10 all the way to 100% in gasoline and try to map out the Hertz output uh, versus methanol by volume blended in the gasoline. So essentially what I had read in a couple articles was that they were trying to find a replacement, a drop-in replacement that worked for E85. So if you didn't have E85, you could use X blend of methanol to take its place using a conventional flex fuel sensor. And that what I have here on my car is a flex fuel sensor, the typical one that you see on GMs, it's a Continental. It's 50 to 150 hertz uh, for zero to 100% ethanol. So typically you would use that in E85 um, in different blends with gasoline but I would like to try it with methanol. Methanol has a lot of really cool properties that I can go over a little bit more in detail later, but uh, you can also find methanol very inexpensively. You don't have to buy uh, name brand expensive race fuel. You can get it as a industrial solvent in bulk for fairly inexpensively. Uh, I think this was five gallons for forty dollars was the going rate but calling a local uh, chemical supplier I was able to find a 55 gallon drum for about two dollars and sixty cents per gallon so if this worked in an application where someone didn't have access to ethanol say they're doing racing and they want to be able to do different flex uh, you know different flex fuel options and they don't have access to E85, they could use methanol, source some methanol, and start blending it in to increase octane and get uh, more performance out of their turbocharged or uh, high performance application. So what I have is a can of clear gas, which is no ethanol, and then I have 91 octane which most pump ethanol, or sorry, pump 91 octane gasoline in North America has 10% ethanol in it. From what I have tested, this is about eight to 9% where I get it. And then E85, which in my area, it's about 65% ethanol. It's not actually E85 where it comes out of the pump, it's 65%. So what I will be doing is using um, the clear gas and the E85 I have as a baseline just to test the sensor and see where we're at on my flex fuel sensor um, output with those and then I will be taking the 91 running it through the sensor see if it gives me the typical output that I see of a 8% ethanol content and then I'll be using the 91 octane um, and the clear gas in different blends from 10% uh, up to 100% and see what the outputs give me. Uh, typically, the output on a flex fuel sensor with ethanol, uh, it will look very similar with methanol, but with ethanol, um, you'll actually see it kind of go something like this. So, uh, you know, and you can draw lines up, you know, kind of where E85 is, and you'll find a spot on the flex fuel sensor where it hits. Um, from what I've seen uh, in, an, in one article that I found that had tried this with methanol, is that methanol basically just rises a little bit sooner, like something like that. And so there was a point where they had found where E85 had... Uh, a similar stoichiometric value and uh, output in the flex fuel sensor 
as somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% methanol. This is very advantageous because you can basically, from what I saw, run 50-ish percent methanol blended in volume uh, in 91 octane and get the same results as what you would get with E85. So this is what I'm trying to find out. I by no means am an expert in any of this, but I think it's an interesting subject and I would like to try it out and see if I can figure it out. Um, if anyone thinks I'm wrong, let me know. I'm happy to take some uh, constructive criticism, but I'm just going to run with this and see what I can find. And we'll go from there. We'll kind of learn together. I, I will be modifying this as we go, but I'm just going to write down the output of the flex fuel sensor as we go up. One caveat is I do not really plan to use anything more than 50% methanol. There's a few reasons for this, but one of the biggest is uh, for methanol, you need about two to two and a half times the amount of fuel by volume um, over gasoline in a performance application, depending on if it's naturally aspirated or turboed. So if you run straight methanol, you need a ton of extra fuel and fuel pump, fuel system, it would really get out of control fast for the capabilities of what I have on my vehicle right now if I go really above this. So my target is just around 50% methanol to see if I can get it to um, output the same lambda values, flex fuel works, and uh, just kind of see if I can even get the car to work with that blend right there. So, uh, let's get into it. The very first thing I need to do is take these quick disconnects off the flex fuel sensor, uh, hold it upright, plug one of the sides, and then I can drip the different blends of fuel through the sensor. While this is going, I'll have my laptop up running a data log and flush it every time with a baseline fuel, so either the clear gas or the 91 octane, depending on which one I'm blending with at the time. So just gonna go pop these off, get a container to put underneath this, get my laptop set up, and we'll be right back. So let me go over the test procedure. I have a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, and this makes it really easy to mix blends in 10% increments because I can just go two, three, four, five, six, and so on milliliters of methanol and then just fill it back to 10 with the gasoline so I can get my blending in 10 milliliters. And the sensor seems to hold about five milliliters so I get a couple tests out of this per time that I fill it up with a blend. I put methanol in one container, clear gas, and then the ethanol gasoline in another container, and then I use a 25 milliliter pipette to extract and then pour into the graduated cylinder. And then I take the graduated cylinder with a seal over the top. Uh, I have a thick gloves when it's full of chemicals, and I just tip it back and forth, make sure it's shaken up completely. And then I come over to the car where I have the laptop running and ethanol percentage. You can see the fuel correction's going crazy because there's none in the sensor right now, but I have ethanol content percentage uh, up here on a data log. And wherever it tells me that is, I'll have a data log of it. As I take the sensor, plug it with my finger with gloves on, fill it up, and then I look over, watch the sensor, I've got a data log on it, and then pour it out, repeat that a couple times with as much fluid as I have, and then start the process over with the different blends of methanol. So, that's what we do. Okay, I've got the pipette here. I'm just gonna dip into the clear gas, grab a few milliliters, 
and now I'll bring it over to the sensor taking the sensor right here just vertically plugging it with my finger with a glove on and then filling it up just like that over on the ethanol content sensor we're still showing zero so I can trust that the, the clear gas is actually not showing any ethanol content. So I'll just drain it out, just like that, and we're clear. Then just uh, we'll just repeat same thing on the ethanol 91 octane, the 8%-ish. So let me just grab some of that. Okay, just plug in the end of the pipette for a second. It tends to get a little bit of air bubbles in it and then there we go. Dribble that in. Cool. Yep, showing bouncing back but back between seven and eight percent ethanol content. So we know that my 91 octane baseline is about 8% previously what I'd tested before. And man, the pipettes are cool. Just a side note. Okay, let's get on to the blending. I will meet you over there on the bench. Okay, we're gonna go, I'm gonna try 80% methanol blend right now. Mostly because right now I have more of this. Um, Let's just see real quick what happens. I'm gonna go straight up to eight. Oh, you dogging me. Just low enough. Should be enough. Let me in, let me in. All right, I might just have enough of the other stuff here to make it happen. Okay, hold on here. Might have two milliliters of gas left. Oh, we're getting down to the wire. I mean, I have a ton more. This is not out of the container. Okay. Man, the methanol, you can see it does that like chemical fuming. You can see it all going crazy in there when you mix it. And uh, yeah, all right. Just gonna mix it. I've been mixing it like plugging it with my thumb, going back and forth gently, making sure do this a bunch of times, making sure it's all blended up, slowly releasing the pressure, and yeah, we're gonna go do it. All right, 10% methanol with the 91 octane, 8%-ish of ethanol. Uh, 18%, 17, 18, bouncing around right in there somewhere. Let's try it one more time. Give it the benefit of the doubt. Being, I'm getting progressively sloppier with this stuff. I just, yep, 18-ish percent. Cool. Leave that over there to dry since I spilled the whole thing. That one might have been, I don't know, man, I get so OCD, but that might have been a milliliter or two off. But you know what? We're close. And for what we're doing, close is pretty good. <laughs> All right, so this is what the laptop looks like when we're at 0% ethanol. I've got the 20% blend of methanol in the 91 octane. And we're going to go put it in the 
the sensor, see what happens. So this is what you'll see uh, as I pour it in, pour it in, pour it in, and comes up. Yeah, look at that right there. 31, 32-ish percent. Yep. Cool, and then I drain it out. And then I usually do one more because it gives me enough in this 10 milliliter graduated cylinder to do another one, just to double check it. Kind of right around 31, 32. Cool, dump it out and uh, we'll go for the next blend. That's uh, kind of the way I'm doing this. I've got a couple other screen captures I'll share with you um, as well, but that's what we're doing. I've gone ahead and made a chart here of some of the results that I've come up with testing 10%, 30%, and 50%. I've also tried 80 and 100, and I quickly realized that this is a little more time consuming when I've got to hold the camera and move around and everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and make a couple more blends off camera. I don't wanna bore you guys, but I'll share the results when I get the Excel spreadsheet in the end. So here we go, we'll get into it. Okay, that concludes the testing. Got all the blends done. All the excess was just thrown in there. That's some random blend. It would be interesting to just dump that in real quick and see. But this is what we have. I've got them all up to 80% where it becomes saturated enough that it doesn't matter after that in the flex fuel. And um, these last two I tried to measure super accurately. Not that I don't on these other ones, but these ones I paid special attention to and we got 89 and 78 respectively. This one is kind of jumping between the two so I'll take whatever's linear. I'm going to put this in an Excel spreadsheet, graph it linearly and we'll kind of see where we end up and then we'll try to get some in-car testing with the motor running with some of these blends. Probably going to start with about a 30% blend and go from there. Thanks guys for joining me. This has been fun, got to put all this back together and uh, button up the rest of the system.